scriptures confirming God's personal spirit body. God's personal spirit body exists. Saints, we would really welcome your prayers and ask you to leave your comments and your questions and even your prayer requests under the comment section. And if you're on YouTube, go ahead and click that bell and subscribe and stay in touch with us. Let us know how you're doing. Watch to the end. That way you'll get a complete understanding of God's spirit body. And again... We're going to be studying about God's personal spirit body. It really does exist, saints. Yes. So we're just going to dive right in, and we're going to start with what? Daniel chapter 7, Seven. verses 9 through 14, Sister Janetta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it out of that. that. What is King James Version. Oh, King James. Yeah, that's that's that one. That yes. one. That's the King James Version. Yes. I think it was. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery steam issued. And came forth from before him thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts that had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were per prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions and beheld one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Fourteen. Yeah. Okay. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and language shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. So we basically have a picture here of the Ancient of Days sitting on the throne. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Describes his garment, his hair, his throne. Wow, that is amazing. And, and the voices. We'll get on that uh, next week about the voice. But saints, I just want to give you a, a real quick uh, review last week we were talking about God's soul and God does have a soul yes. God is a spirit being he is not the sun the moon the stars an image of wood stone or metal and he's not a beast and he's not a man the, the way that we're humans he is not the air the wind the universal mind love or some impersonal quality he's not mystical he's real Yes. He is a person with a person's body, a personal spirit body, a personal soul. And like that of angels and like that of man, except his body is a spirit body, saints. It's spiritual substance. In Job 13, 8, it talks about will you accept God's person. You have to accept that. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. So today we're again studying about his personal spirit body and we just spoke of Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 through 14 speaking of the ancient of days describing him. This is amazing. And he has a shape in John chapter 5 verse 37 sister Janetta and I'm going to go um, I'm going to look up Philippians 2 5 through 7 un under his form. So he's a shape and a form. John 5 37. And the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. 
but you do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent him you do not believe. <laughs> Yeah, there's a sh that's that's the the shape John chapter five verse thirty seven. That's right. And now um, in Philippians two, five through seven, we have his form. And then you're going to look up the image and likeness of a man, which will be okay. the Genesis one twenty six and Genesis nine six. So God's form, Philippians chapter two, verses five through seven. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and made in the likeness of men. I wonder how many times we actually read this stuff and let it sink in, saints. God has a spirit body, a shape, a form, in the image and likeness of a man, according to Genesis 126, Sister Janetta. Okay, it says, Then God said, Let us make men in our image according to our likenesses, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God, I'm really going. So God created man in his own image. Image and likeness of a man, and then Genesis 9, 6. Whoever sheds man's blood by man his blood shall be shed for in the image for in the image of God he made man wow in the image of God, God he, he made, made man. man so we've got his image and likeness in Genesis 126 and 9 6, six. so in Ezekiel chapter 1 Verses 26 and 28. And Miss Janetta, you're going to pull up 1 Corinthians 11, right. 7. Okay. So in Ezekiel 1, 26, and 20, 26 through 28, it reads on this wise. And above the firmament that was over the, their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins, even upward, and from the appearance of his loins, even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about it. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Yes. So, um, the image and likeness of a man, 1 Corinthians 11, 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. But woman is the glory of man. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Yes. The image and likeness of man and man being the image and likeness of God. Isn't that awesome? Isn't it neat to be one with the Lord? So we're still talking about the image and likeness of a man saint. So we are looking at James chapter 3 verse 9 in the New Testament. James chapter 3 verse 9 we're talking about God's personal spirit body. It exists. Therewith bless we God even the Father and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. Oh, wow. It's almost like, mmm. That's almost scary to think about. He has bodily parts, Sister Janetta. Yes, he does. Such as back parts in Exodus 33, 23. Yes. He has a heart in Genesis 6, 6 and Genesis 8, 21. He has hands and fingers that we're going to find out in Psalm 8, 3 through 6, and Hebrews 1, 10, and Revelation 5, 1 through 7. 
He has a mouth, a tongue, feet, eyes, ears, hair. He has a head. He has a face. He has arms. We just t heard about his loins yes. and other bodily parts. Isn't that amazing? So you've got um, his back parts, Exodus 33, 23. We yes. should all know that yes. one. Yes, yes, yes. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. And that was where Moses wanted to, to see him. Right. And he said, you can't look upon me and live. That's right. And so he showed him his, he told him to hide in the cleft of the rock, so and he glory. showed him his, his, uh, his back parts. His he glory. said that he couldn't, we can't see God in his glory. We, right. we, we would die. And that's it's it's not possible. No, it's not possible, and we're seeing that in a lot of the uh, big mega churches, where you know there's saying that they're seeing the glory of God. And uh, all, yeah, no, no. Sense. If it was for um, real, they would be on their face. They God not. is not a man. He is not mm -hmm. a man that should lie, and he is not going to be mock saints. No, he's not. We are in a human body, and we are not going to see God in all of his glory until we leave this body, right. and we have a spirit body like him. Right. Okay, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus is God in the flesh. When he transfigured, if he had been in his his greatest glory, them um, three boys would have been dead. dead. They'd have been fried, yes. okay? Yes. Uh, they just got a glimpse of his Spirit, spirit being yes isn't that amazing yes yes i love scriptures and that's one reason uh moses when he come down from that mountain his hair was so wide everything and that's just a little bit of god's glory i know because shining he, yes his face was, was shining he yes. had to wear a veil over his face this yes. scared them people near to death just right. looking at moses people would just realize. So people can see a glow on us. Yes. When they come up and say, yes, I see, do. I seen something glowing over here. We're like, yeah. Yeah. But book. if you seen God in all his glory, you'd be with God. Yes, you would. Um, yes, he you has would. a heart in Genesis chapter 6, verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. A saint. He has a soul. He has a heart. Oh, yeah. He has a spirit body. God is amazing. Let's find out how amazing he is in Genesis 8, 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of a man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. So we know that if he can smell, he has a nose. Right. He has senses in the physical realm. And he has a heart. Yes. Oh, that is just like, thank you, Lord. What about hands and fingers in Psalms yes. 8, 3 through 6? It says, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all these things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the, through the paths of the seas are added. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. He's got hands and fingers yes, and does. feet. And feet, yes. And Hebrews 1.10, and thou, Lord... In the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Oh, yes, we know God has hands. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Um, God is on his throne, and Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, so we are his hands and feet and voice on this earth. Right. Through the spirit realm. Yes. Isn't that awesome? Yes. But when he says we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, that's in a spiritual sense. But one day we're actually physically going to be there with our spirit body. Right. Wow. Wow. Ooh. Yes. Yeah, I can feel yes. the presence of the Most yes. High God. Do you have, which one do you? I have Revelation. 5, 1 through 7? Yes. I uh, taught about his hands and fingers. Mm-hmm. And I saw in the right hand of him 
who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? Wow. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the sea was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Yes. Hands and fingers. That means yes. he's got to have a thumb, too. Yes. Okay? Hands and fingers. fingers. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Well, hey, if he's sitting on the throne, that means he's got back parts, like we just seen in Exodus, right? Right. He's and he's got hands and he's feet. This is hands. like, wow. He's sitting on the throne. But, you know, you got people that take John chapter 4, verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I know. They're, they, they don't understand Man. because they don't break that down. Mm -hmm. God is a person with a personal yes. spirit body yes. and personal soul personal spirit he's got a buttocks he's he, he, he's got buttocks he's sitting on him buddy he said it is finished i'm sitting down resting right, that's right praise you him know. i'm like saints this is so amazing it's so interesting that god has parts yeah he's not some mystical wave or or Oh, you just want to... Or an angel. Exactly. Yes. Just break this scripture down. He has a mouth, saints. Yes, if you've ever does. heard God's voice, you know he's speaking. Yes, he is. And he's got a physical mouth. Numbers chapter 12, verse 8. Miss Janetta, you're going to do lips and tongue. Isaiah 30, 27 is going to be next. Isaiah. Numbers 12, 8. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? If you go back to Numbers chapter 12, you're going to find out that God came in the midst of Miriam and Aaron and Moses, and he yes, set them straight. He did. And he, he said, with him will I speak mouth to mouth, mouth to mouth. That's pretty interesting because this is the Hebrew um, year 5780, P-E-Y, pe, the spoken, the, the mouth, the spoken word. Wow. That's what that means. It's yeah. like, yeah, God has a, pe, a mouth. He speaks out of lips and tongue, Isaiah thirty twenty seven. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar, burning with his anger, and his burden is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue has a devouring fire. Wow. So he has a tongue. Read that again. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar burning with his anger and his burden is heavy his lips are full of indignation and his tongue like a devouring fire think about that his lips are full of indignation and his tongue a burning fire that is not the tongue that you want to endure or even mm. hear you do not want to be in God's wrath because his no. tongue is a burning fire, fire, a flaming sword. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes, yes. He has feet, saints. Ezekiel 127, 
And uh, Miss Janetta, Exodus 24.10. So God has feet, saints. Ezekiel 127. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward. I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. Wow. <laughs> loins up, loins down. That means he's got a head, he's got loins, and he's got feet. Right. Um, Exodus 24.10. Right. Uh, and they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and it was like the very heavens in its clarity. His feet were where? Um, his feet were on a paved work of sapphire stone. His feet, feet wow. was on sapphire stone. Sapphire stone. stone. Sapphire is what blue. color? Blue. blue. That real deep, deep blue. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. God's got feet. And it was like the very heavens in its clarity. Wow. wow. You can actually see that. Uh, God has eyes in Psalm 11, 4. This is so exciting. God's eyes. 11, Psalm 11, 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids try the children of men. Wow. In that. Oh, wow. I don't want to. I, I don't want to be judged by the Lord. I want to be tried in his fire so that I come out like gold. Yes, yes, yes. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. So there's actually a place that he resides. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. Yes, wow. Yes. Psalm 18, 24. No. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in yes. his eyesight. Doesn't matter how awesome we think we are in our own eyes, saints. What we need to be concerned about is how we're looking okay. to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and how He sees us. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's sobering. It is. Boy, you it drunk, is. honey, it'll sober you yeah. up. Yes. Might want to put that old lick down and pick up a Bible. I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> He's got eyes. Psalm 33, 18. It says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear Him, on those who hope in His mercy. So who is He concentrating His eyes on? On the ones that fear Him, reverently fear Him. And it doesn't mean it's not an emotion. It's not to make, be afraid. Fear, Break it, it down. Well, fear, it means to honor him, to trust him, and to know that uh, his word is his word, and he's never going to leave us or forsake us. There you go. He's going to do it all for us. But we've got to be in that place of reverential fear, fear. and sanctification, our set right. apartness. Right. You can't live in the world. No, no. And be part of it. You can't. And please the Lord. You can't. But you have to live in it and be separated from it. Well, there is a difference, saying There is a big difference. And you can't listen to uh, um, music, hip-hop music and all of this Beyonce and all of that, and then do worship music. Well, hey, you can't now you think about it, what you're talking about right there, right there, right, right. right there. You cannot do that. He's looking Look at, at us and he's watching us and if we truly fear the Lord there are certain things we're not going to listen to I'm not going to 
we're not going to partake in mm -mm. and we're not going to compromise with and we're no. not going to compromise with the world and we're not going to bring the worldly music and the shows and, we and the strobe be, lights and all the smoke and screens and all that be, stuff into the yes, church yes, because yes. God has eyes and he's watching right. the children of righteousness that fear him and, and he's what he sees yes. everything yes he does and he's not a fake fog and he's not all of those lights and uh, he's not that his spirit is not there that's not holy spirit oh it's a spirit it just it's a, a holy it's, spirit that's what i'm saying it's a spirit all right he it's, has guys he has ears to hear yes ears psalm 18 6 he has ears to hear. I love this one. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and he and cried unto my God. He heard my voice yes. out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears. Yes. God has ears. Okay. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That doesn't mean that he's a spirit. No without a body and no possibility of having a form or a shape because the holy scriptures the canon of scriptures is there for our boundaries the scripture the the holy scripture is a canon a yes. boundary yes. from olive to tau and god has enough sense people in his head he has a brain he's god he has eyes and ears and nose. He has all of that. He knows what we need to keep us in the boundaries. Okay? There's a binding right here from Genesis to Revelation. If God wanted it in the canon of scriptures, he would have put it in the canon of scriptures. Yes, yes. Okay? Yes, yes. He has eyes to see. He has ears to hear. He knows what you're saying mm -hmm. in your house. Yes. On the cell phone. It's not like somebody's watching you on the cell phone. He's actually there with you. He's yes. omnipotent. He's omnipresent. Omnipotent. And he's, om he's, he's what? Omnipresent. Right. Omniscient. Omnipotent. He knows all, hears all, sees all. He's everywhere at one time. We can't wrap our mind around. We're not supposed to. Just no. understand who God is. He has hair. He has a head. He has face. He has arms. In Daniel 7, 9 through 14, we already read it. Right. When you get a chance, read Daniel 10, 5 through 19. We've right. already read Revelation 5, 1 through 7. Yes. Now we're going to read Revelation 22, 4 through 6. Revelation 22, 4 through 6. This is the fun part. I love it. <laughs> and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. See that right there? That's a forehead. Forehead. His name is written there. In the spirit realm, saints, they see his mark on my forehead okay it's already there he has marked me he has put his signature on me i am imprinted in him and he is imprinted in me and if you believe him today you will see his face according to revelation 22 verse 4 and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads verse 5 and there shall be no night there and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. He's talking about us in eternity, in the millennial reign with Christ Jesus and forever. And he said unto me, verse 6, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must, must shortly be done. Saints, don't be afraid. For what is going on in this earth. Don't be afraid. No, he's going to provide. He's got a shape. He's got a form. He yes. has an image and likeness of man. And we are made in his yes. image. He has bodily parts. He has, a, he has back parts. A heart. Hands. Fingers. A mouth. Lips. A tongue. Arms. Eyes. 
ears, hair, head, face, arms, loins. We already looked at Ezekiel 1, 26 through 28. Now, Miss Janetta, we need Ezekiel 8, 1 through 4. God has everything that he made us to be. He has already been. He is the pre-existing one. He is the Aleph and the Tau, the beginning and the end. In the, in the Greek, it's Alpha and Omega. He said, I was and I am and I will always be. You can't separate God from his creation because he created everything. In John chapter 1, all things were made by him and nothing that was made was made without him. It's very simple. John chapter 1, the gospel. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word what the word was with God and the word was God. In him was the life, and the life was the light of all men, and the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It seriously tells us all things were created by him, and without him nothing was made that was made. He didn't twinkle his nose and, and say a magic uh, ritual, decree, declare, right. creed, um, mantra, chant, he spoke and creation happened. Think about it. He had a voice, he has a mouth. The spirit of the God, the spirit of the most high God moved over the waters. We're gonna see. Yes. The yes, fact we remains are. is we're gonna see and we're gonna believe. But some people are like, I ain't gonna believe till I see. Well, how's that working right. for you? Because right. that time then then it'll be judgment, but you will still right. bow your knee. Yes, you and your tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is God to the glory of God the Father. So we see that one last place about loins in um, Ezekiel 8, 1 through 4. 8, 1 through 4. It's 8, 1 through 4. This says 8, 1 through 4. It's only 20 chapters before. Hey, you're in the right book. That's all that matters. Hey, we're in the right book. That's yes. what matters. And uh, the canon of scripture is there for our boundaries so that we know how to live life yes. according to God's boundaries, according to his laws. We don't need all these mystical teachings and all of the love. Okay? God is love, but he's true love. He's going to tell you the truth. I'm yes. going to tell you the truth. Sister yes. Jeanette is going to tell you the truth. If you don't like the truth, you're probably not going to want to be around us. Well, it says. I mean, look, there's two of us here. There's a reason for that. Because right. we're not going to tell you mm. a sugar-coated fairy tale. No. We're not going to serve frosted flakes. No. No. Okay? We're going to be you got it? vinegar. The, well, you got to have the sweet and sour. Right. We're All right. You got, the, you got it? Eight, do. one through four. And God's it says, it says vision of the glory of God. Ooh, ooh, the vision of the yes. glory of God. Vision, the mind vision. you. Yeah. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah sitting before me, that the hand of the Lord fell upon me there. The hand. The hand. Oh, it's got the hand in there, mm -hmm. too. And I looked, and there was a likeness like the appearance of fire from the appearance of his waist downward fire and from his waist and upward like the appearance of brightness like the color of amber he stretched out the form of a hand and he took me by a lock of my hair and the spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven and brought me in visions of god to jerusalem to the door of the north gate and to the inner court where the seat of the image of jealousy was, which provoked to jealousy. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, like the vision that I saw in the plain. There you go. Wow. Wow. Saints, God has a bodily presence. He has a voice, a countenance, he wears clothes, he eats, he rests, 
He he dwells in a mansion in a city in heaven. He sits on a throne. He walks. He rides. And he engages in other activities. Next Wednesday, we're gonna we're gonna study the rest of this about his bodily presence. All of those things that he takes pleasure in and, and has activity in. We've already learned that God has a personal soul. We've just found out about his personal spirit body. And I really like the fact that all of his personal attributes, you know, you're talking about the gifts of the spirit so many people want. Instead of having gifts of the spirit, they should want the fruit of the spirit exactly. and be more like God. Yes, yes. Because um, you can be a low-down, dirty dog and still have gifts. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And uh, stealing money from folk, gifted as you can be. Mm -hmm. But when it really starts showing up is if you got the fruit of the Spirit. Exactly. Exactly. In Galatians chapter 5. Five. Yeah. So God has also been seen bodily many, many times. He can be understood, saints, by the things that he made. We, man, we are the visible image and likeness making the invisible God clearly seen. <laughs> and you know what? We're going to cover 18 proofs. 18 proofs that God can be seen. Yes. Not in his full glory. No. Or you'd be dead. Exactly. So, this was a good study on today. God's personal spirit body. Does it exist, Sister Janetta? Yes, it does. And Real? It, and it says in His Word that we are created in His image. So, that tells me there's no color. We don't know what color. There you go. There's no color. You mean there's no tint? There's no tint. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That in his work, and he makes no difference. Not everybody's lives matter to him. Everybody. Every, wow, I'm glad you said that. Yes, everybody's right. life matters, matters because that, that's scriptural. It is. He takes no, no. joy or satisfaction no, in the death not. of anyone. Right. Oh, All no. souls belong to the Lord, Lord, saints. He grieves. He has a personal spirit body. God has a soul. God has a spirit. He has body parts. And he is real. And somebody tells you God is a spirit and he's only a spirit, they don't know the word of God and they don't know how to study the Bible. They don't know how to study scriptures. If somebody tells you, oh, God is a spirit. And he has to be he has to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. That truth is your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, every ounce of you worshiping in truth. 